Right, so welcome back to the History in 20 podcast, everyone. Uh, today I've got a very special guest on. It's uh, Dr. Henry Knight Lozano, who is a senior lecturer in history and director of liberal arts at the University of Exeter. He specialises in US expansion, place promotion, race, climate and environment, with a particular focus on the United States, tropical and semi-tropical frontiers, California, Florida and Hawaii. Henry has written numerous works around this area, including his 2013 publication, Tropics and Hopes, California, Florida and the Selling of American Paradise, 1869 to 1929, which won the 2013 Florida Book Award Gold Medal in Florida Nonfiction. And I'll put a link in the comments below so you can buy that if you want to. So thanks for joining me, Henry. Thank you um, for the invitation, um, Jester. And uh, yeah, it's great. I mean, former student of mine and, and great to reconnect after after many years Thanks yeah absolutely yeah so for anyone who doesn't know Henry was a lecturer of mine at Northumbria University when I studied there um, so that's the connection that uh, Henry and I have so to kick things off today we're talking about the gold rush so the first sort of question Henry is what was the gold rush for anyone who hasn't heard of it before so where and when did it happen Sure. So the um, the California Gold Rush um, began in in earnest in in 1848, really the very beginning of 1848, with the discovery of gold in the uh, Sierra Nevada mountains in Northern California by by a man named James Marshall. Um, it's not the first discovery of gold in, in, in the United States in North America, but it is in many ways the most significant because it sets off this um, enormous um, kind of migration of people, this rush of people, really from all over the world. Um, you get people coming from the Eastern United States, but also from Europe, from all, really all around the Pacific Rim, um, South America, Pacific Islands, Australia. Um, and in the process, it, it rapidly transforms California, the American West, but also the relationship between those places in the world. That's great, thank you very much. So that's a quick overview of the gold rush for anyone who doesn't know that yet. So the next sort of question I have is, what kick-started the gold rush, would you say? Were, were there numerous factors, so sort of the origins behind it? Was, was there a multitude of factors or was it just gold was discovered one day and then boom, explosion? No, it, it, is, um, it, is, a, it is a number of factors. Um, so you get that initial finding in, in, in late January, 1848. Um, and there is an effort by these guys, James Marshall, and he works for a man named John Sutter. They're building a sawmill in the mountains. There is an effort to try and keep this under wraps, um, you know, try and keep it relatively secret. But, um, you know, word spreads. And by later in 1848, the news has spread to San Francisco, which is a relatively small town at that point. Um, nothing like it will become through the gold rush. Um, but basically, a lot of people leave San Francisco for the mountains to kind of find out, is this real? Um, but the gold rush as a kind of national and international event really transforms at the end of that year. So December 1848, the president, a man named James Polk, who has been very important actually in the U.S., annexing California. And it's an important context here, which is that California was previously part of Mexico. The United States has, has effectively won this territory through war um, and then purchased almost contemporary with these events. James Polk in his State of the Union address, which all presidents give, um, says he, he, he's displayed some gold in the War Department offices and says this is real. This is not um, rumor and kind of myth, but this gold is real. The opportunity is there. And as you'd imagine, this kind of stamp of authority from a figure like the president convinces a lot of people that it's worth the risk, the, the long journey out to California. Um, so the time and money and perhaps even, you know, risk of, of life and limb, it's worth it because there's gold to be had out there. Um, so that's why you get the term, that's December 1848, that's where you get the term the 49ers, like the NFL team, the San Francisco 49ers, because 1849 sees a huge influx, um, tens of thousands of people going out to California to try and make it rich in, in, in the gold fields. That's great, thank you very much. 
So that's answered my next, my next question as well, which was what was President Polk's reaction? And I think you've, you've explained that really well there. So thanks for that one. So uh, well, I, I'll just add something there, yeah, if it's all right. Just, yeah. Yeah, um, so Polk, um, Polk had been very keen to, to annex California, um, partly because of its Pacific uh, frontage and the idea that this would link up to, you know, the Asia and, and other opportunities for, for, the, for the United States. Um, but he sees, and many others see the discovery of gold as a kind of vindication of the US um, annexing California, um, because it seems from their perspective that we've, we've annexed California, oh, and magically we've discovered gold. And there's this kind of belief that it was, it was destined to happen this way. Um, you know, historically, there are other factors about why they find it then, I think, because they're cutting yeah. down a lot of trees and they're looking at the mountains. But for Polk, it seems a sign of kind of destiny. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Great. So what were the economic effects of the gold rush in the California area sort of immediately afterwards in like 49, 1850, 1851, etc.? Were there any immediate economic effects or was it more of a longevity before it, it took to arrive? Yeah, I mean, both. It has it has massive sort of short term impacts, but also long term. I mean, in the short term, it it creates um, it. Fl I mean, it floods the, the local market and beyond with with gold, with gold coins, um, which leads to a lot of investment and the kind of diversification of California's economy. Um, so while a lot of people are mining, um, others quickly realize that actually the way to make a sustainable living here is is through the industries that miners need so for example you get folks like Levi Strauss who um, makes hard wearing trousers leave of Levi's basically that, that we know of today that are really in demand that, are, that you know have have sustainable pockets and, and things that all miners want um, and other industries like that, that, that sort of feed off the miners, if you like. Um, so it establishes, is, you know, a kind of a multiplication of industries. San Francisco becomes almost overnight a very important port and, and trading center where everyone's kind of coming into, into the gold region. Um, and longer term, just one example, um, is it, it kind of accelerates the desire, the need for a transcontinental railroad, because this is obviously far afield from the majority of, of, of the population of the United States. Um, and so as California suddenly attracts all these people, there is a much, um, you know, there is a heightened need to connect up the West Coast with the East, and they're exploring how to build out there a railroad. Oh, brilliant. Thanks very much. I know you mentioned there about it sort of helped the diversification of the economy. So going into sort of like diversity and stuff. So with regards to race, what sort of tensions erupted as a result of the gold rush? So for example, did white people benefit more than maybe Native Americans or black Americans who were coming over? Just wondered if, if we could discuss that for a bit. Mm. Yeah, it's a really, really important um, question. And I think it, it is, um, it is a critical issue in, in, in gold rush, California. I mean, something that connects, all these people, both kind of Native Americans, but also white Americans and people from other parts of the world, they're connected by the desire to, to find gold. And, you know, in the very early years of the gold rush, you have Native Americans, uh, white Americans, other people, you know, coming in to, to, to try and, and find gold in the rivers. Um, but what happens quite quickly, particularly in 1849, as the numbers increase, is there is greater tension competition for gold and one of the ways in which that competition uh, manifests is in terms of race so particularly um, Native Americans are targeted and become um, you know in some cases there's an effort to sort of exterminate them if you like from parts of Northern California um, that, 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 that has degrees of kind of state sanctioned backing the governor of California is, is broadly supportive of an effort to kind of remove Native Americans from the gold region. Um, but also with Mexico and Mexicans. So re very recently, there's been a war, the Mexican-American War. So there's quite a lot of tension and bad blood already between Americans and Mexicans. Um, and 
a number of Mexicans come into California as gold miners and are quite successful because they're, they've experienced mining in, in Sonora and other places. Um, and there's a kind of resentment that emerges against them. So you get these um, taxes called foreign miners taxes that are passed in California in the early 1850s, which specifically target Mexicans and Chinese immigrants and say, well, you're not welcome here in these mines. These are for, uh, white American and sometimes European, they're, they're, they're sometimes much more sympathetic to white Europeans uh, who are also foreigners, but they are not deemed kind of obviously non-white foreigners. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's quite a violent and certainly a febrile place where race is, is one of the important dividers that, that separates different mining communities. That, that, that's a really interesting point there, actually, because I think a lot of people think of the gold rush from what they've seen in, uh, whether it be like Western movies or anything, where people are just, they're there and they're all getting on together and having a jolly old time. But obviously the reality of it was very different, particularly if you were a minority. So that sort of leads on to my next question here, which is kind of like, obviously when people think of the gold rush, they think of these of white European American men traveling west to California to make their fortune but there must have been obviously women along there or even families who lived in those communities. So how did that social dynamic work and what were their experiences like as women and uh, maybe even children? Yeah, yeah, it's a really good question. And I think you raise an important point um, about how the gold rush is, is sort of memorialized and whose stories are told in, in popular culture and to an extent for a long time in, in, in history. Um, and that's about race, but it's also about gender. I mean, I think, you know, the dominant image of the gold rush for a long time was of, was of men at work. You know, these kind of, if you look at the visual culture that depicted it, it was almost always men um, out in the mines. And there is, a, there is a truth to that. I mean, if you look at the, the census records of, of California at that point, it is um, discounting, say, the Native American population for a moment. It is very predominantly male. Um, and there are a lot of cultural reasons why men dominated the, the groups who went out to California for mining. But it's important to think, think about, one, the fact that there were women who, who went out in the gold rush, wives, sisters, daughters, um, and independent women, um, but also their experiences within gold rush um, California, because an interesting element of this is that kind of by their scarcity, the fact that there were relatively few um, white women in, in California, um, they were very much in demand for um, jobs and work that back east may not have paid very well. Things like running boarding houses, um, restaurants, um, forms of entertainment like theater. Um, so you get these women uh, like Luzena Wilson who opens a boarding house in, in, in the mining country um, and it, she is actually able to make a lot more money doing that than she would have back east but also a lot more money than her husband is making as a gold miner. Um, so there's this kind of interesting thing where um, some women um, basically are able to maximize I suppose the, the, the opportunity because there are not many of them there and you know you get these miners accounts saying you know I've gone a whole year and I've only seen two women in that whole time so when they do encounter a woman um, you know there is this kind of um, it's kind of a phenomenon that they, they remark upon um, that said you asked about families I mean it's definitely viewed as a place where you shouldn't be raising a family. You shouldn't be because it is a culture that's defined by trying to get rich quick, drinking, gambling, and to a degree elements of, of violence, um, a very kind of frontier um, kind of uh, community. So the mindset, both of men and of many women, is that they are there for a, time, a period of time and then they are gonna leave and they're gonna hopefully take their winnings and go back home. So it takes a while for California to sort of recover, if you like, from that um, uh, mentality and be seen as a place where you might actually want to settle, um, like many other parts of the American West, which are seen as you know good places to settle as a family and have your piece of land. California is all about the gold and all about this kind of get rich and get out mentality. 
Right. Oh, that's really interesting. So did, did most people leave then after, say, they'd worked there for six months, a year, whatever? Did, did they tend to leave and go back home or did they settle elsewhere on the sort of western coast of America? Or? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good question. I mean, it's, it's hard to speak generally because it's such a large migration of people. Um, but I think you see different, you see different um, kind of camps with that, if you like. So you do get a lot who leave, who will some who have done well and kind of you know understand that you know they've they've sort of beaten the casino and it's time to leave um others though wait and wait in the hope that they will they will get get lucky and i mean an important thing to mention here briefly is actually the the chances of success if you like diminish partly because there's more people but also it gets harder to get at the goal so increasingly you need technology you need like um hydraulic pumps to to get at the gold that's buried in the land um so that requires money and investment so it gets harder and harder for the kind of individual miner to make it so you get these very sad stories and letters home about people who are kind of hanging on hanging on in california in the hope that their luck's going to turn um and then you get others who would stay there but abandon mining california's a big big state and you know there are other opportunities that that emerge there so you begin to get people turning to farming um, and other industries um, you've come a very long way if you come out to california so sometimes the the decision is actually i'm i'm best off staying here but doing something else yeah so i guess with a lot of the sort of overseas immigrants who come over that was probably the case as well if they hadn't managed to get rich quick then they're almost stuck there so they had to make a living there somehow and I imagine that experience must have been quite difficult for a lot of them given the racial tensions at the time. Yeah and I mean a good a good example to think about there are the Chinese diaspora so many of the Chinese who come over to the gold rush um, in the 1850s are planning on on going back to China um, many they're mostly men uh, many of them leave their their wives and families back in China and they send they plan to or they send their their money back to China and many of them do go back across the Pacific but a, a lot of them stay in California and despite facing quite a lot of discrimination they are banned for example from testifying in court um, and things like that they they end up kind of migrating to other mining frontiers within the West and also many of them end up working on the transcontinental railroad that I mentioned earlier um, so while they are kind of seen as uh, unwanted by many white Americans they actually do a lot of the hard labor uh, in the west to help kind of build it up in that period. All right that's excellent thanks for that uh, so sort of the last main question I've got is what what is the legacy of the gold rush I know we talked about the short-term impacts earlier so maybe a better way of phrasing that is what was sort of the long-term impacts of the gold rush in the years and decades that followed? Yeah, I think I think we could think about this in different ways. I mean, the the economic impact is huge in that it establishes um, California as this Pacific kind of powerhouse for the United States. You know, we could try to imagine a different history where the gold rush doesn't happen. And I think California is a very, a very, very different place. It attracts a lot of population. Um, investment development and so on um, I think it also creates a mystique for California that still exists today you know when when people talk about somewhere like Silicon Valley they they talk about it in the language of the the second or the new gold rush and California um, you could look at Hollywood or somewhere as well California develops in part through the gold rush this this mystique as somewhere where you can you can transform your life economically but also in terms of having a different kind of lifestyle a place a place that is kind of exceptional um, so I think it 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 really is a seminal event for making California what it becomes this kind of quite distinctive place in the United States but also how we think of California around the world yeah and it still holds like you, like you mentioned it still holds that sort of allure even today I think people think of like we've had obviously the golden age of Hollywood but um, I remember we discussed in a lecture once just about even the geography of California itself you've got like the forests in the north and there's like the beaches mountains everything like that it still holds that sort of like it's a mysterious kind of 
uh, lure towards it. And I think that's that definitely could certainly could be attributed to the gold rush. I think, yeah, absolutely. Mm. So I'll uh, I'll stop the recording there. Uh,